Hello, I'm Howie Sheriff, and welcome to another show from You Call This Yoga, an educational nonprofit organization. Have you ever noticed any tension in your neck and shoulder area? Feel a little bit of restriction from hunched over? Or also sleeping in a funny position? Or possibly just working at something and things feel a little wonky. Well, we have some exercises with breathing, to call it yoga, to facilitate reducing some of that neck and shoulder tension. Notice how I'm sitting with my hands up? Well, that's a good start. So let's follow up with our first pose, mountain. That could happen whether you're standing or seated. I like the orientation of two fists spacing between my knees, as well as orienting that towards my feet, creating this alignment of my legs from my hips to my toes. How does that affect the neck and shoulders? Well, if your feet are not properly supporting the legs, the hips, and the spine, then the head's gonna tip over, and we're gonna overactivate muscles here that are for balance, but not necessarily to shoulder the load. I like the palms up because it also activates my shoulder blade to support the position of my head. What's a shoulder blade? Well, those are those big bones in the back of your body behind your rib cage. Stand up and roll around or rub against the wall and find those shoulder blades. They're back there. Speaking of back, let's get back to mountain. You've got your feet drawing down. And we've got the spine drawing up. From here, with our palms up if comfortable, or just hands resting by your side, we can position the elbows so that they're under the shoulder. That could be revolutionary for you, but in standard mountain pose, which is like standing at attention, the hands are near your side. In a plumb positioning, meaning the arm is straight down, once we get on a chair, things can get kind of wonky, especially if you're working on a computer, working in a kitchen, at a desk, driving, lots of tension, and we'll explore how to open that up further. Mountain pose is our start. From here, I'd like to use the thumb as a referencing to bring the shoulder blades together and towards your spine and waist. Hmm, that's different. So consider the idea of palms opening upward, thumbs rotating outward, shoulder blades together and towards the spine. Good. Let's practice the breathing and gentle movement of activating the shoulder blades. Hmm. That could be a new country for you. Yes, what's happening back there? Beautiful. Notice that my elbows are near the side of my body and my hands are going wider than my elbows. Hand, elbow, good. When the thumbs go out, the shoulder blades can come in. Interesting connection. Thumbs out, shoulder blades in. How does that compare with thumbs in, 
elbows out, shoulder blades flared. Hmm. Causes tension up here. This trapezius muscle is crunching to support this arm. That's a lot of work. Many people spend lots of money trying to reduce this tension only to go back to the same habit. So let's consider our mountain. Opening up and releasing. Beautiful. So that idea of opening can be accompanied by lifting the spine. So when we're lifting the spine, we can bring the rib cage up and forward, draw the shoulder blades down, and create our miniature cow. We're extending upward, lifting the chest, drawing the shoulder blades down with a mini back bend. I call it a mini back bend because we're essentially extending upward with a little draping of the shoulder blades over the back ribs. If you can imagine draping a towel over the back of a chair, then you can imagine draping your shoulder blades over your back ribs. Beautiful. Now that we have that sense of draping the shoulder blades down, let them get heavy. Good. We could start to try to lengthen this area instead of closing it. Hmm, ever noticed that before? Where are your shoulder heights? Are they up to your ears? Or are they drawing down to create a nice lengthening of this area? Good. So with that awareness, we could add a little shoulder roll. I'll keep one arm steady and roll the other. We can just let the arm dangle and on the inhale, we're gonna lift the chest, draw the arm back a little, and exhale, return it. So it's a lift the chest, but a drop the arm. So with this roll, it's not necessarily a circle, but it's just a little lift, a little roll, and rest. Let's explore the other side. Let the arm dangle, lift the chest, drop the shoulder blade, exhale, roll it back. Lift, drop, roll on the exhale. One more, lift, drop the shoulder blade, exhale, roll it forward, and rest. Now that we've done one side and then the other, let's do both. See if you can drop the arms into a nice plump positioning. Inhale, lift the chest, draw the shoulder blades back. Exhale, roll them forward and rest. Couple more. Lift and drop. Exhale, roll and rest. One more. Lift, drop, exhale, roll them and rest. So we're keeping an extended spine to help the upper area settle down. I mentioned this area as having tension. Let's feel how it feels. If you'll take one or two fingers and just place them up here, not on the neck, but on this upper trapezius muscle area. It's the one that feels knotty. Not naughty, but naughty. And can you just breathe, sit up tall, and notice how this feels when you massage it? Hopefully good, but it might be a little tender from overwork. Good. Switch directions. Notice how this side feels while you're functioning with it. Good. Then just shake out the hand. Come back to mountain, find your other two fingers, and find that upper trap area, and you can just massage it as you breathe. 
couple more breaths. Good. Did you notice a difference from one side to the other? What we're going to attempt is to keep this upper trap drawing downward with the shoulder blade. Upper trap, and you can keep your finger there. Shoulder blade, chest lift. And what I'd like us to consider is just a straight arm lift. See if you can gently support this area to stay down so that when you inhale, your arm could come up and diagonally and exhale down. So this muscle need not be activated to float the arm up, but we may be practiced at locking that in. See if you could sit up tall, gentle down pressure, inhale, gentle lift. The thumb is leading the way back. It's coming up, 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 and goes back, 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 back. Exhale, lower. Good. One more. Beautiful. And rest. Shake it out. Let it settle. Come to the other side. Nice massage. Just feel where it is. Orient the arm. And as you inhale, you could sit up tall. Come out laterally with the hand, so the hand is further out than the elbow. Good. Does it feel differently on this side? And it could. Each shoulder area could be different, and even just reaching across with the hand can feel differently. Good. One more. Good, settle and rest and shake it out. We could then experience what it might be like is if we were holding a globe and we're coming up and out and exhale lower. Good, one more. Good, and come on back. I'm gonna return my hands to my neutral position Hopefully that's becoming a little more familiar for you. Have you ever served a tray with drinks on them? Notice that you might have the tray supported with a palm up position. What we're going to do is open and offer the tray to our guests and exhale and rest. So let's lift heart level Exhale and return. Couple more. Lift. Good. Open. Exhale and return. Two more. We're lifting the spine, relaxing the upper traps, opening, exhaling, staying tall, and lowering. One more. Mmm, everyone's coming over for a beverage. Good going. Settle and rest. Beautiful. Shake out whatever you need to. Is that starting to feel a little differently for you? I hope so, in a positive way. Good. Let's come back to your mountain pose. Check your feet. Beautiful. Continuing along. Let's let the arms dangle, lift the spine, take a couple of breaths. We're going to practice sweeping the arms out at different points on a clock face. What does that mean? Well, on the inhale, we're going to lift the chest and draw the arms back at 7 o'clock. Can you picture my hand pointing at 7 o'clock? And then this one might be at five o'clock. So we've got seven and five. Can you picture that? Good. And lower. Try it again. Seven and five, lift the chest. Good. Next, let's go to eight o'clock. Let's inhale, lift the chest. Try to float the arms up. This could be eight o'clock. This could be four o'clock. 
can even try this in front of a mirror and see how that feels. Take another breath, keep relaxing the upper traps, but engaging the shoulder blades and rest. Now for some of us who aren't used to engaging those muscles back there, this could be tiring. So you're allowed to take a break at any time and just see what feels right for you. It may not be the best time, literally, for your body. But if you're comfortable, you can continue up the clock face or explore these other times. Let's go up to nine o'clock and three o'clock. See if you could start in neutral, inhale, open up to nine and three. This is similar to our warrior two pose. And once again, I'd like you to consider arms at heart level, just above the, below the nipple line. Good. Breathe in this pose. See if you can relax the upper traps while you're doing that. Let your heart open. Good. And then you can come back. An alternative to this nine and three is having the palms up. That actually activates your shoulder blades a little bit more, which helps to relax the upper traps. How is that? Let's see. Let's inhale up. Relax the upper traps, engage your shoulder blades, and then just flip the palms forward and upward. What I'm trying to do is, you can see this hand wiggling, is draw the thumb backward. That could activate some muscles in the arm here. And be mindful not to hyperextend your elbow. We're just gently rotating the elbow so that the thumb can orient back Good, and release. A couple more. See if you can float it, stabilize, keep breathing. You can massage this area, flip the palm up if necessary, which is also fine. Good, one more breath and return. I felt so good, let's do it for the other side. Lift, breathe, flip, Massage. Yeah, that massage part is pretty good. Keep breathing. Can you orient the thumb back? Good. One more breath. And return. Shake out whatever needs shaken. That was nine and three. What about ten and two? See if we can come up and out. Good. See if you can lift the chest up and forward. Good, we're approaching some of the form that we might take in warrior one. Good, see if you can keep breathing with the chest up or the thumbs orienting backwards. Good, one more breath, lower and return. Little massage if you need it. Do you feel any change in the tension in this area? In reverse direction. Good. Hear any good crackling sounds as your body shifts? All right. So that was 10 and 2. I encourage consideration, but not mandatory. Can we come up to 11 and 1? Orienting the thumbs back, chest is up and forward. Warrior 1 is a back bend. So keep pushing your tailbone down, lifting the spine so the shoulder blades can drape over your back ribs and then reduce and return. Try that again, good. Come on up, holding the space, going wider. Can you picture 11 and one? Soften the bend in the elbows if necessary to avoid hyperextension. Keep lifting, relaxing the neck and shoulder, and then returning and settle. Hmm. So we've gone up the clock face. We've gone seven, eight, nine, ten. Notice the palms are up. Eleven 
and then back. So notice what time is good for you and explore. I also have neck and shoulder issues. I've had surgeries. So I've had different ranges of motion on each side. And it's always interesting to compare. So I'm gonna drop this arm and use the other one to draw down on my leg and help me stay up. Then I'm just gonna bring this arm out to the side and then bring it behind me. My elbow may or may not rest on the chair arm. I'm actually trying to avoid it. And I turn the palm up behind me. So this arm's palm is up. My thumb can massage my lower back. I'll turn sideways to demonstrate. Now my hand is palm up and it's lifting my spine, causing this area to relax. The elbow is down, the thumb is up. Good. Keep lifting your back ribs, breathing, Good, relaxing the upper trap, coming out, shake it out. This may or may not work for you because of ranges of motion. Let's go to the other side. I've got the palm up, letting this arm dangle. I'll bring it out, sweep it behind me, settle the thumb area against my back, sitting up, I could feel a difference from this side compared to the other. There are many variables as to why that is, but it's okay to explore as long as it's comfortable and feeling safe. One more breath. See if you're relaxing the upper traps. Beautiful. Release. Roll it out however is comfortable. Hmm. What would happen if we used both arms? What that means is I'm cupping the hands together and lifting gently. Notice the elbows are relatively lower to the hands now. So I'm drawing the elbows down, which relaxes the upper trap. So let's take one at a time behind us. See if you can turn the palms upward. Let one arm rest on top of the other. I'll turn sideways. Inhale, lift. Draw the shoulder blades together and breathe. We're lifting the spine. We're not collapsing. One more breath. Good. Then notice which arm is stacked on top of the other. And let's just reverse it. Oh, that could be a totally different experience. Mountain legs, let's lift up, drop the shoulder blades, and breathe. Relaxing the upper traps. Good. Then let's release the arms, roll it around. If you have some rotator cuff issues, that could have been a little bit of stretchy but that's why we're keeping the shoulder blades down. If you're curled, that's when this rotator cuff gets impinged on, if it's not already slightly damaged. This is what we're trying to do, is take the pressure from here and from here. Beautiful. Come back to your mountain pose. Check the feet. Beautiful. Let's sit up and take a couple of breaths. For our finale, we will do a shoulder flow. How does that go? Well, we start in our mountain, just hinge the elbows, bring the fingertips together, soft wrists. Why I like that is because when we have a bent wrist, oh gosh, look at those elbows. Feel that upper trap. Relax the elbows. Mmm, what a difference. 
So avoiding the bend in the wrist. On the inhale, let's open the space in front of us, coming down at seven, starting to flip the palms, eight, nine, 10, whatever's your truth, 11. Beautiful. Then let's sweep the arms slowly downward on the exhale. Come back to seven. Good. Inhale, slice through the pinky area, down at seven, lifting the chest. Good. Then staying tall, just float the arms in front, soft fingers and wrists. Inhale, just rotate the elbows and the palms are up and bring the wrists back to the ribs. Then as you exhale, keeping the hands low, pinky tips, outside edges of the pinkies touching, forearms may touch, elbows may touch or not, lifting the arms and then returning. That one may take some development Let's practice some more. Sweeping down, lifting the heart, gathering the space. Exhale, floating them open, staying tall. From seven, we can draw back, orienting lower, but lifting the chest. Staying tall, floating the fingers in front. Inhale, palms are up and the wrists are to the ribs. Exhale, shoulder blades draping down. The fingers can float together. Pinkies, palms, forearms, elbows, or not, and back to heart. Notice any bends, any collapses? Let's try a couple more. Sweeping and gathering, letting the shoulder blades guide the movement. Exhale opening. Inhale, drawing back, lifting the chest like cow. Exhale, floating the fingers forward relaxedly. Inhale, open and the wrists to the ribs. Exhale, drape those shoulder blades to float the sides of the pinkies, palms, forearms and elbows together. And then back to heart. One more, sweep and gather, exhale open, inhale arms down, chest up, exhale stay tall, float the fingers together, inhale open, wrists back to the ribs, exhale shoulder blades down and back, pinkies, palms, forearms, elbows, back to heart, and rest. Hmm, just when you're starting to feel a little more relaxed, we can take a break and just notice how it feels. Hmm. Practicing having the palms up could be revolutionary. You don't have to live like this because most of our activities are palms down. So this is part of the antidote. I'll invite you to visit our website, youcallthisyoga.org, for articles, information, and events, plus our YouTube channel, You Call This Yoga, for our cache of videos. I look forward to participating with you again soon. Namaste.